Hey there, welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna discuss the vertical line test. It's gonna be very, very short. Um, you've probably heard of the vertical line test before. If you haven't, that's not a big deal. I'll explain it very well. I'm gonna focus more on the why it works than the how you do it. I'm gonna explain both of them, but mostly the why it works. That's how we retain things, by understanding them. So what is the vertical line test? Why does it work and, and how do you do it? The vertical line test is a way that we check whether the graph of some sort of mathematical uh, expression or well, equation is a function or not. So when we, when we look at a graph, we should be able to determine immediately whether it's a function or whether it's not. So how we do that is by understanding the interplay that functions have between inputs and outputs. Remember, for functions, one input gives you one output. That's it. So what we're going to focus on is why the vertical line test actually works. Um, in order to start, we've got to know that the input axis, I'm not going to really talk about x's and y's, the input axis is the horizontal axis. Unless we switch that around, the horizontal axis is, is for inputs. So with that in mind, if this is the input axis and this is the output axis, when we pick a number to plug in on the input axis, it's kind of a horizontal idea, isn't it? If this was x, you'd say, all right, x equals 5 is here, and x equals negative 4 is over here. And we move horizontally to, to locate different inputs. However, for any given input, the output will be somewhere above or below it. That's why our output axis we call vertical, because it, it has this idea that our outputs will be strung along somewhere along this direction, above or below each individual input. That's how the rectangular coordinate system works. You go over to an input, then you go up or down for your output. We all know this because we can graph points at this point. So if our input axis is horizontal, and at every given input, the output will be somewhere above or below it, this vertical idea, then all we have to do is go over to any given input, go right, here's, my, here's an input, and we check vertically how many outputs are given to us. So we look above it, hey, is there an input, or sorry, is there an output above or below it? Is there an output below? Our idea is that if one input must give us one output, and our inputs are somewhere along a horizontal line, we're going to go somewhere along that horizontal line, we're going to pick a point, and then we go, right, look above and below it. Because if there's an output for that particular input, it's going to appear vertically. The output axis is vertical. Therefore, all of our outputs must be vertically given above or below that input. And if we find one input, great. At that point, that's a functional relationship. If we find two outputs, that's a problem. That's giving us a non-function for that input, and that ruins the whole thing for us. And this whole thing is not a function, because right here, see this? At that point, well, we have two outputs for one input. And we do this for the entire graph. So that's why the vertical line test works. It's based on the idea that for functions, one input's got to give you one output. Since inputs are located horizontally, we pick a point on this horizontal axis anywhere that you want. And once you pick a point, basically we do it for the whole axis, once you pick a point on there, then you look above and below because our outputs must be strung along vertically. If we touch our graph at more than one point, well then at that input, you are getting two or more outputs. That is a non-function. It's giving you more than one output for that single input. We're going to practice a few of them, but that's basically the rundown here. So take a look at the, our, our diagonal line. Our input axis is horizontal. I've purposely not labeled these x and y because it doesn't really matter. Our input axis is horizontal. Our output axis is vertical. We look at every point along our horizontal axis and think, all right, well, what's going on here? Uh, what's, where would our outputs be located at this point? outputs would be vertical. Well, if my outputs are vertical and I start crossing my graph right here that says, hey, there's an output for that given input, isn't there? That says, at this input, I would get that number out. At this input, I would get that number out. At this input, I would get that number out. Because for every given input on the input axis, our vertical axis where it touches the graph, that would be our output. Are we touching the graph more than one time for any given one input? I know that we touched the graph three times, but that was for three different inputs. That's fine. And if we continue across the whole axis, no matter what, even here, that's, hey, the output is on the axis, no problem. And we look vertically 
And everywhere we touch the graph, that is the output for the specific input that we've chosen. Every single time that we have checked an input and we do this across the whole axis, we are getting one output. Right there that says that one input's given us one output, it's not touching the graph twice. The vertical line test here says that that is a function. What about the next one? Imagine some vertical lines. Imagine choosing an input here and here and here and here, all the way down here. And imagine vertical lines at every single one of those inputs. Those vertical lines are the outputs or the representation of where the output would be for that given input. And where we hit the graph, here and here and here and here, those are the outputs for those given inputs that we've chosen. Are we getting more than one point on a vertical line? The vertical line represents the outputs for that input. So if we're getting more than one touching of our graph, more than one point on a vertical line, we would have a non-function. Well, I kind of messed that one up and be up here. Well, no, we're not. We're getting one point for this vertical line, one point for that one, one point for this one, one point for that one. There's never a case where we're getting two outputs for any given input. This is a function. That one, right off the bat, what do you think? If we, if we look at it, we go, all right, uh, take an input here. Great, inputs are on the horizontal axis, no problem. An output would be somewhere along a vertical line. The vertical axis is the output axis, so our outputs would be a vertical idea having chosen an input. And you go, all right, well, here's my output axis. Like, here's where my outputs would be. Let's look at the graph. There's an output there, there's an output there. Those are the two outputs on that vertical, oh wait, those are the two outputs on the vertical line for that input. So I chose my input, I looked at all the potential, all the outputs that we have, and we crossed the graph twice. Same for that graph, there are two given outputs for that one given input. Right there, you're done. Uh, you stop and you say, that's not a function, because I put in one input. I chose one point on the input axis. I looked vertically above and below it, and it gave me two points out. That's not a function. This one for sure is a function. We can imagine some vertical lines of all these different inputs. We think through it and go, you know what? Every vertical line, you don't even have to draw them. You can imagine them. Every vertical line that we think about is only going to have one time crossing that graph. That means that every, of those, every one of those inputs that I chose for those vertical lines or every possible input on that horizontal axis is probably a better way to put it. For every possible input on that horizontal axis, and I imagine an infinite number of vertical lines, there's never a case where a vertical line is going to have two outputs. It's going to touch our graph twice. That does not happen here. This is a function because for every possible input, I'm getting one output. You know what, I need to backtrack for a second. Is it okay to get no outputs for an input? Yeah, and it can still be a function, actually. If we think about square roots, um, and a square root looks like this, even though these inputs over here are not defined for that square root, they create imaginary numbers. So when we plug in um, negatives into a square root, we learn this in domain, there's nothing there for real numbers. So it doesn't show up graphically on a real coordinate plane. This does not say that you don't have a function. And this over here, for every possible input, we have one output. That is also a function. So don't, I, I should have probably mentioned that when we got to there, but don't let it be the case like, man, I'm not getting any inputs, therefore it's not a function. That's not the case. The case is, is this. Where you have inputs on your horizontal axis and you have something that's defined for your function, so where your inputs give you outputs, there's only one. That's the idea. So where the inputs are giving you outputs, there's only one output and not two. So function, yes, function, yes, function, no, there's two. Function, yes, function, no. For this input, or lots of them, you're getting two outputs for that input, you're done. That's not a function.
Lastly, how about the vertical line test? Can a vertical line pass the vertical so I said vertical line test? Can the vertical line pass a vertical line test? Uh, well, let's think about it. What if I pick an input over here? Are there any other inputs or sorry, outputs for that input? No. That's fine. If you it, it, we're not worried about inputs not giving us outputs. We're worried about where the inputs are giving us outputs. They're giving us only one. So we check all these. Hey, there's there's no problem with any of these vertical lines. But as soon as I get to that input right there, I say, hey, what's the one output for that one input? You go, uh, there's lots of outputs for that one input. In fact, every point vertical is an output for that input. That's a non-function. And I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that, that you're seeing the interplay between inputs and outputs on the vertical line test, that we're checking inputs, that's a horizontal idea, so you locate one, and you look above it and below it for an output. And if it has outputs, there can only be one output from it. So yes, yes, no, that's a problem. Yes, that's fine. No, that's not, that's not fine. Uh, no, that's not fine. Vertical line does not pass vertical line test. Here, this is certainly a function. So a square root says, I'm not getting any outputs, therefore the vertical line test doesn't really apply, but where I get outputs for my inputs, there's only one output for every given input. That's how the vertical line test works. That's why it works. And so we're going to be using that from time to time just to check to see whether we have functions or not. Or when we're graphing, like especially piecewise functions, um, to make sure that we're not actually accidentally overlapping our graphs because that wouldn't be a function. So I hope it makes sense. I'll see you for the next video.